Okay, I suppose this is a bit weird and maybe interesting, I suppose, that I'm going to be using the SP32 because um, primarily the Arduino seems to take the command, if you like. The Arduino is usually the go-to microcontroller, the one that all the videos are about. But anyway, I thought it'd be different. So, ESP32. I'm going to plug in one side of this into the breadboard and it's going to be the side with RX0 and TX0 in it. And um, I'll just push this in. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? I'll just push it anywhere. There will do. So I've pushed the ESP32 in and now I think I'll push the um, the ADS115 in and now let's get some jumper wires and let's sort this thing out so to start with I've got a red wire and I'm going to go from 3.3 um, volts on the ESP32 to the VDD pin which I'm sure it's supposed to be VCC then um, in fact I'm going to just zoom out a little bit that's better so you can just see the ESP32 then I'm going to go from ground on the ESP32 to ground on the ADS1115. Then I'm going to go from, um, hmm, what should we go to next? SCL. I always get confused with this, but I'll go from pin 22. I hope it's 22 now. I get confused between pins 21 and 22. But anyway, 22 to SCL. I hope that's right. Then I'm going to go from 21 to SDA. Those two could be the other way around, but I'm, I'll confirm that later. Pretty sure it will be right though. And then I'm going to go from ground again. Oops, I've just pulled that off there. I'm going to go from ground again to um, ADDR address. And um, I just thought I'd uh, add something in at this point. If you are working with the Arduino, you'd usually use uh, pins A4 and A5 uh, for I squared C. Off the top of my head, anyway. I can't remember which one's which, but you'd use A4 and A5, anyway. Uh, so, now why have I put ground into ADDR? The reason being is because the voltage of ADDR um, determines the address of the thing. So, if you have more than one of these, then they can have separate addresses. And um, by connecting this to ground it gives it a certain address which which I know and that will help me later on down the line. Right so I've got the thing wired up but how are we going to test it? To test it we really need to read in a voltage of course into the pins or at least one or two of the pins so I'm thinking of a quick way to do that. I mean I could use a current shunt or something but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it a very lazy way so uh, what I will do is I'll take out the ground wires. Let's take out the ground from address and put it into the ground rail like that and then I'm going to put the ground on the ADS1115 to the ground rail as well and of course address address needs to go into the ground rail too. Let's put that over there to keep it simple. So now what I want to do is I want to make a very simple voltage divider and um, very lazy I know. So I'm going to have a 10k resistor from 3.3 volts uh, to the breadboard and then from the same connector I'm going to go from there to the ground rail. Just like that. So I've got a resistor from 3.3 volts to here and then from here to the ground rail. And then in the middle I'm just going to have two wires, two little jumper wires right in the middle of the two and one can go to A0 and the other one can go to A2. So what should happen now is we should be reading half of 3.3 volts into pins A0 and A2. And now what we should do um, is we should ground A1 and A3. If we're not using them it's considered bad practice to leave them floating so we'll ground those two. Um, and the reason being is that it can just get interference um, so we're going to go from A1 to ground and if I can find another jumper wire here, there we go, A3, A3 also to ground. And this is our test rig if you like. 
So I'll plug this thing in now and we'll go over to the code and um, and see what happens. Right, so we need to go to sketch and then include library and then manage libraries. And of course the repository is going to show up and it will show us all the libraries. So we've got type all, topic all and filter your search. In filter your search type in Ada fruit and it's this top library here so it's ADS 1x15 I suppose I've got something to say about Adafruit look how many libraries they write here and they write them for us and we don't pay for them so that's really excellent work and we kind of owe them for that because without them writing these libraries we'd really be struggling what it would mean is that we'd basically have to write our own libraries or rely on you know the odd the odd guy here who writes one and freely gives it away on github or whatever so yeah, uh, they do some very good work. So we should probably support them by uh, buying some of their products or whatever so that they can invest the money in investigating uh, new technologies and writing new libraries, I suppose. So yeah, uh, install that thing and then you might have to restart Arduino and then go to examples and then go to ADS1x15 and then, like I said earlier, we've got three different modes that you could use. There's comparator, differential and single-ended. All three are useful but for, for the purpose of this tutorial and just keeping it simple I'm going to choose single-ended. And what this means is that we're just going to measure the four different um, pins individually. Right, to start with we've got the 16-bit version so I'm going to delete the, old, the other line and control T and then over here let's just make some changes 115200 that's what I'm used to and then over here, uh, I suppose we can comment that out. Right, now I was going to gloss over this. I was just going to gloss over it and move on and say there you go. But actually I think it's quite important. Um, basically, the way this works is that um, you've got to consider the voltage that you use to power the ADS uh, module. So if you're powering it with 3.3 volts or 5 volts, then the input to any one of the analog pins cannot exceed that voltage. So in my case I'm powering it with 3.3 volts and it basically means that I cannot read more than 3.3 volts into any pin, any one pin. So you can't do it. And if you do that you can damage your, your ADC. And likewise if you're using 5 volts, your power of 5 volts do not exceed 5 volts in any of the ADC pins. Okay, then Going on to gain, this is where I suppose it gets quite interesting. You've got to have a trade-off between potentially destroying your ADC and having good resolution. So let's say, for example, you're measuring the voltage drop of a current shunt, and let's say the maximum voltage drop could be 200 millivolts, then you'd use this one here because the range allows it. So you want to get the smallest uh, number you can really um, but not so small that you would ever exceed this number so for a um, current shunt 200 millivolts milli milli max you definitely use this one what about if you were trying to measure a uh, you know the voltage of a lithium ion cell or something like that lithium ion cells range from 3 volts to 4.2 volts so which one would you choose you would have to choose this one um, because 4.2 volts is greater than that one so you couldn't benefit from the precision of that one you'd have to go for this one so yeah basically um, look at the thing that you're trying to measure and make sure that it is lower than this number if it's higher than the number then you're gonna have problems um, so yeah so in my specific example what am I doing well, I'm reading half, because I've got the voltage divider, I'm reading half of 3.3 volts, uh, which is about 1.75 volts or something like that. So which gain should I use? Well, um, I can't use that one because 1.7 volts is higher. Uh, I can't use that one. I'd have to use this one. And these go from minus to plus as well, which I, I don't think I'll go into that. But basically, um, the maximum I could read in is around 1.75 uh, volts and therefore this one is the most appropriate so I'm going to use this one you don't actually have to use any but if you don't use any you get uh, stuck with this one which is still definitely fine I mean you still get excellent resolution with this ADS uh, module because it's an excellent module 
and it resolves to over 65,000 counts, which is incredible. Anyway, I'll stop waffling and carry on. So gain of two. Okay. Then over here, we've got uh, int ADC 0, 1, 2, and 3 to define the variables which the values get read into. Then we read them into the values. And here we've got serial println, which prints the, the uh, variables out. So I'll upload that to the uh, ESP32. I've got it uh, selected and I've got the uh, COM port right, so I'll upload it. And let's see what happens to start with. Right, so Control Shift M and let's see what happens. So we're reading in these values uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So 0 and 2 are 28,300 or 400 or whatever and 1 and 3 are minus 1 and minus 2 and I suppose that makes sense because we're reading values from um, well there are 65,000 values potentially that we could be reading from so yeah uh, this denotes near full kind of and this denotes near zero which is midway um, between 0 and 65,000 anyway what we need to do now is change it from counts to voltage so let's close that and I suppose it would be a good idea if we just uh, did this. So I'll change, well not change, I'll just write float there. So um, let's do this, F, 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 F. And then we'll do AD, whoops, ADC0, uh, no, F ADC0 equals... Um, this multiplied by and now this is quite cool really we don't really have to do any calculations because Adafruit have already done the calculations for us I mean they're not particularly difficult anyway but whatever so you see this uh, value here on this one here if you have the ADS1115 choose the gain that you've uh, selected and just copy the amount of millivolts here and that represents the amount of millivolts per count so yeah um, so float ADC0 equals ADC0 uh, multiplied by the amount of millivolts uh, per count, or actually the amount of volts per count. Um, where's that millivolts? Hmm. Well, well, we'll soon see anyway. In fact, I think that is millivolts. Zero point whatever millivolts. Wow, that's extremely precise. Anyway, uh, so control T. And we need to do this for ADC uh, 1, 2, and 3. So... 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3. So control T. Um, and now we just need to change this. So F, 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 F. And we might actually have to put string around that as well. Um, I'm not sure if it'll work otherwise. So let's take this and put it in there. And let's see what happens. So control T, control U. Let's see what happens. So it's uploaded now. So I'll press control shift M and see what happens. Okay, so A0 is reading uh, 1750 millivolts. And A1 is reading 0 and A3 is 0 and A2 is 1760 millivolts. So um, let's bear this in mind. 1760 and I'll go over to the camera and we'll check it with the voltmeter and make sure so 1760 okay so uh, there's the ADS and the SV32 I've got my voltmeter and I'll set this to um, the 2000 millivolt range and let's see what happens so what I want to do is just uh, measure maybe two of these pins so we'll have we'll hold ground on the ground pin and then over here let's do A0 and you can see that it says whoops you can see that it says 1670 let's try the next one Zero, well 1 millivolt next one 1670 so it's extremely close and um, the difference could be due to a number of things but it's only a very tiny difference but it's most likely because there's um, a large amount of resistance in these wires because these are long wires and it's cheap cable 
So I would imagine uh, it probably is absolutely spot on. So we're a couple of millivolts out according to the voltmeter, but I'm extremely happy with that. And I think that's probably more accurate than the uh, voltmeter, but who knows. So anyway, um, that's how to use the ADS1115 uh, and that's how to wire it up with the SP32. So of course, in real life, um, you wouldn't be using the voltage divider which is here. You'd actually plug in the, um, the, vol you know, the pins for the thing that you're trying to measure. I mean, but there you go. So that's how to do it, that's how to wire it, and that's how to use the code which is supplied by Adafruit. So thank you for watching. Bye.